Also tonight, allegations of a church cover-up. Former members say sexual misconduct accusations against a powerful leader have been swept under the rug. But now a number of victims are saying Me Too, breaking their silence on a new website and to Channel 3 and the investigator Tom Meyer. He's back with part two of a story you won't see anywhere else. You feel like you're the only one. Um, you may have your suspicions, but you're so afraid to talk to someone. Kevin Glover accuses Bishop Joseph White of sexually abusing him. White is the founder and presiding bishop of the Church of the Living God International based in Columbus. His typical behavior is to walk around the room without any clothes on. Glover was stunned to find out that White was tossed out of the church for the same immoral conduct years ago. This 1994 letter obtained by Channel 3 details an earlier investigation by the Church of the Living God. The board wrote, quote, the concern was the misconduct of Bishop White. He did not deny the charges. The Bible said the flesh is, uh, is sinful. Instead of being turned over to law enforcement, White was allowed to form his own branch of the church just by adding international to the title. Church members outside Columbus, many stationed overseas like Glover, never got word White was kicked out or why. Bishop White said the church was simply expanding. The number of alleged victims continued to grow as well. He would often expose himself to them. Attorney Tyler Fox is representing men who have recently come forward. For years, he was sexually abusing parishioners there, not only in the uh, Columbus area and churches near Cleveland, but actually in other parts of the world. You go in, with your guard down. Lloyd Ocampo was in the U.S. Air Force when he first met Bishop White. He says White framed predatory sexual behavior as, quote, church work. White would claim he was, quote, in the spirit while on the prowl. We've been groomed to believe that this man is the, the closest thing to Jesus, so obviously there's a teaching moment in it, and obviously there's something spiritual we can garner. And it's all under the umbrella of the work of the ministry. You, you know what you call that? The lust of the flesh. In 2017, the mother of one of White's alleged victims finally blew the whistle to the CLGI board. A few weeks later, the church sent out this letter to pastors and church elders saying, quote, the board received allegations of inappropriate conduct by our presiding bishop made by five past and current members. He comes when I need him most. The church conducted an internal investigation last fall, but results have yet to be released. Well, I don't believe he stopped. And I don't think he, he will stop. Bishop White sounded defiant during a recent sermon. You have been hearing about a, a letter that's going out. Now that letter is, is according to a law, some kind of a law. The Lord spoke to me and told me this morning and said, that law doesn't govern you. For one to say that they're above the laws, that is very alarming because um, sexual misconduct and harassment, the crimes in my opinion. Last month, Glover walked away from his 20 plus years as a bishop for a CLGI church in Georgia. He says he's fed up with the cover-up. There was no way that I was going to sit in with the board of directors as a bishop, knowing that there are many victims. Bishop White ignored our repeated calls to get his side of the story. We caught up with him at church headquarters in Columbus. Some former church members, including minors, have accused you. Bishop White, Bishop White, please. Bishop White, just want to ask you about allegations that are being made against you. They're not true. The church has been raising a million dollars for Bishop White in his 50 years of service, but the so-called 50 is million website was taken offline overnight. Tom, let me ask you about the church's board of directors. How has it responded to all of this? Russ, we still don't know the results of the church's internal investigation, which began last fall. We have learned, however, that two board members have resigned their positions no. since we began poking around. I have to imagine this isn't over, Tom. Sarah, we have a number of story leads, and we are pursuing them. The investigator, Tom Meyer, thank you. You bet.